now I'm on the bed, on the floor, doing this from the window to the wall. I'm just everywhere in that room contracting. Hey guys, it's me, Ray, and welcome back to my channel. Today I am here to do, I would guess I can call it a story time. Um, and the story time topic is my childbirth experience, labor and delivery story. My This week is Black Maternal Health Week. Black Maternal Health Week is a time to call attention to the unacceptable maternal health gap in the United States and also to consider policy solutions to the systemic in inequities that led to adverse health outcomes for black birthing people. Um, there is a high percentage of black women who enter into labor and delivery to have their beautiful babies and unfortunately they have a terrible experience um, and some of them don't even make it out and um, this happens for many reasons and it's deeply rooted in systemic racism and um, you know racism as a whole where you have a lot of um, there's not a lot of representation in the health field as well as a lot of the doctors um, who are majority are white men don't really re, don't really view or respect um, black moms as they would someone else of another race, white women. Trust me, if you search black birthing experience or my birth story black woman on YouTube, I'm pretty sure you'll get tons and tons of videos of black women explaining their horrible birthing experiences where they um, told the doctor that they felt something was wrong and the doctor said oh no you're fine or um, they, they just had a, a, a hunch or a feeling that you know something just wasn't right and they feel like they were, their voices were not heard in the hospital which as a result caused them to experience um, a very traumatic experience or a, um, a major health complication that sometimes result in death and these complications are deep rooted in the fact that a lot of black women do not feel respected and heard during the labor and delivery experience the reason why i'm here today is because like many other first-time moms when i first heard the stories about the black birthing experience um it frightened me I've never experienced a birth myself besides the research that I've done on re on YouTube. Um, so I wasn't really well educated on it before coming pregnant. And I really wasn't educated on it while I was pregnant. So because of that and because of what I read and heard about a lot of black women going into the hospitals to have their baby and unfortunately not making it out, I had this... Um, idea in the back of my mind that I need to do the best that I can to control my birthing experience. So it forced me to do a lot of research on um, what to expect during labor and delivery, um, what to do to prepare and um, just to prepare myself because I was very fearful. And the reason why I was feel fearful is because of all of these things that I heard. So I really want to share my birthing experience because it was a very positive one and I feel like there are many black young first time moms out there who are currently pregnant and just like I was on YouTube searching for videos to hear about this birthing experience and unfortunately a majority of the videos that are out there are negative experiences and I want to do my part in, ex in sharing my positive experience so that I can encourage another black young mom, first time mom, to believe that, you know, regardless of what's going on in the world, yes, the numbers are high for the bad experiences, but there are good ones out there and I want to make sure that I share mine. Okay, so where do I begin? I would say that um, this all began when I when I mean this um, my journey to taking 
taking back my time, I'll say, my journey towards taking back and owning and being in control of my experience, my health experience and interaction started when I first moved to North Carolina. Um, when I first moved to North Carolina, I said, you know what, I am new here. This is my opportunity to, you know, start everything on a clean slate. So when it was time for me to start doing research on OBGYNs, I said, you know what, let me just Google um, African American GYN. And that's where this whole journey started. So I did that. I Googled um, the first black face that came up. Um, I clicked on her office and I scheduled my first appointment. So when I show up to my appointment, um, this young black doctor walks into the room. And when I say young, I was like, I was taken aback. I'm like, oh. I started doing the math in my head. Like, how many years does it take to go, to, go through medical school? And um, I'm not going to say her name because, you know, I want to protect my privacy and you know everyone's privacy so i walk into the doctor I'm, I'm, when she walked into the room it's like i i just immediately felt like i was talking to one of my home girls one of my my cousins i'm not even gonna say auntie because she looks very young and um she introduced myself and that was the first medical experience that I had where I felt completely comfortable with speaking to my doctor about what I was going through and um it's just it was just an amazing experience so um she became you know my GYN she did my annual checkups you know all of the female works that you know we need to get done um I, I had a great conversation with her about birth control I explained to her that I was a newlywed she said you know let me know when you are ready to start discussing family planning it was no pressure you know we laughed it was such a comfortable experience and I was just so relieved so fast forward to when um it was time that I became pregnant I um my husband and I was married for for a few years and um, I started to think, we, we were together for a few years and we was married for a few years before I got pregnant, that I was starting to second guess in my mind like, mm, is something wrong with me? Can I not get pregnant? And not to say that we was like purposely trying, but you know, I was not on birth control. And you know, so I, I was just curious to know. So one day um, I had a conversation with my doctor and I said, you know, I just was wondering like, is this like, would you be able to tell me if there's something wrong? And she said, trust me, do not. Um, the only way that I would say that we can start doing testing to see if there's something wrong is if you tell me that you you are actively trying to get pregnant for at least one year straight. And when she said actively, meaning like purposely having sex on ovulation period, marking down on the calendar, like literally actively trying to get pregnant. But if you're just living life, having a good time, you guys are, you know, being intimate when you when you're intimate and you know, don't worry. She's like when it when it's meant to happen, it will happen. Okay, so I become pregnant now. So I announced to my doctor that I'm pregnant. We're happy and you know we started my um you know maternal health experience. And it was a great one. So, if you all don't know, my baby girl is a pandemic baby. And she was born May 2020. So, during that time, um, I was so happy and I was so comfortable during my pregnancy journey. Because I felt so confident that my doctor was going to deliver Soraya. So, as we, were, we started to get deep into the pandemic and deep into, you know, later into the months that I was planning to deliver, she sat me down and she said, I just want to tell you, you know, this pandemic thing is really, really serious. Um, I'm no longer going to be seeing you during your appointments because I have to be, I'm being pulled into the hospital and I don't want you to get your hopes up because I may not be able to deliver your baby. So right then and there, my anxiety went up. She said, the way that it's going to work is whoever's on call um will deliver your baby and she said the only way that we can guarantee that i deliver your baby is if you schedule to be induced or you schedule a c-section 
And going back to what I said before about me trying to take ownership of my medical and my, you know, birthing experience, I did tons and tons of research on a natural birth experience. So I already had set in my mind that I was going to do all that I could to control not having a C-section and I didn't want to do anything um, medically to interrupt the natural process. I wanted to allow my body to tell me when I was ready to go into labor. So scheduling a C-section and scheduling to be inducted just didn't work for me. So I said, you know what, God is going to protect me. And I said, don't worry about it. I'm just going to pray that you are on call when I go into it. She was like, okay, I'm telling you, make sure that you are prepared because I don't want you to be disappointed. So we continue to do my doctor's appointment. Now I'm getting closer to my due date and I'm just so nervous. But all I did during this time was I just continued to pray and I just continued to, you know, some people call it being naive or some people call it um being unrealistic living your life like a fairy tale but i am very 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 big on manifesting and very big on keeping a positive mindset because our mind controls everything and i truly believe that our minds control our birth and experience so i just said to myself don't worry everything's gonna be okay if she can't deliver soraya then I'm pretty sure that God will allow the best person fit for the job to help me. Okay, so now here we are, 38 weeks pregnant. At this point, when you're that far along into your pregnancy, you go to the doctor every single week. So I was um, working from home at this point because like I told you, this was the pandemic. I was very comfortable working at home. One weekend, so Soraya was born on May 26th. I'm going to go to my phone so that I can give you guys the receipts so that you can get this story authentically. Um, My due date was... What was my due date? June 6th? Yeah, June 6th was Soraya's due date. I think it was like the first week of June. Don't quote me. So, and she was born on a Tuesday. So the weekend before Soraya was born, I had, okay, I had an appointment May 19th. And, you know, things were looking good. I, I didn't have any signs of labor. Everything was fine. Tractions, and they'll let you know what you need to do. And, you know, it'll do everything for you. You know, we're living in the days of, there's an app for that. So I had an app for that. So I wake up, and luckily, um... I haven't, you know, shared this with you guys, but um, I'm a truck wife. <laughs> Look, my husband is a truck driver, so he's on the road a lot. So he was home this weekend. So I wake up and I'm like, oh my God, I don't know what's going on. My stomach is hurting really bad. It's like this tightening feeling. So I immediately um, pull out the app and I said, don't worry, I'm fine. I'm just going to see what it is. So I started to track my contractions and I'm, well, I started to... I didn't know it was contractions. I started to write down when the pain started and when it stopped. So this had this ended up going on the entire weekend. So I was um, tracking the pain. I reached out to the nurse triage on my app, and they said, you know, don't worry, they're not close to apart. It's it's nothing. So now the weekend is over. Now we here we are Sunday night going into Monday. And the pain was extremely more intense. So I called the doctor. Um, I, I was tracking in the app. The app sent me an alert after tracking my contractions. And it said, get ready. We recommend that you get ready to go to the hospital now. You can check whether you packed all your things, your documents, and, you know, just start getting ready. But you should call your doctor and start heading to the hospital. This alert came based off of how close my pain was happening, was contracting. So um, I was like, mm? I said, you know what? No, let me find. So it, it was only happening at night. It, every time I went to sleep, this is when this pain started to happen. But when I wake up during the day, I was fine. So I said, you know what? I'm not going to... Whatever. The doctor said that it's nothing serious. So I called the doctor again Monday morning. And the doctor says that I was experiencing something called 
Padramo Labor. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I'll put it across the screen. The screen, and it's basically labor that starts and stops before fully active labor begins, and it's often called forced labor. But this is a poor description. So it's it's basically not labor, false labor. I guess it's your body is preparing. So the reason why I had stuck this pain out through the weekend and Monday is because I had my scheduled 38 week checkup on Tuesday. So I said, you know what, I'm just going to push through and I'll wait for them to check me on Tuesday because since they check you every week, um, the doctor will be able to know whether or not I'm dilating or whatever's going on. So back to my black doctor who I love. She was not she was on call that week so she was working in the hospital due to covid and she could she did not see me for my weekly appointments so i was going to the hospital to see a random midwife so i show up to the hospital i tell her everything that i was exp experiencing during the weekend i told her that one of the nurses said it was pajama label labor she asked me how i was feeling at that moment i said i was fine so um wait a minute uh, let me back to track the story okay Remember, I told you guys that my husband is a truck driver. So because I was experiencing this pain through the weekend and because I am just trying to always be super prepared, when it was time for me to go to my appointment on Tuesday, I said, let me pack Soraya's car seat in the car and let me pack my hospital bag and all of my things just in case when I go to the doctor on Tuesday, what if they decide to keep me? So the whole weekend, my husband was asking me, like, what's going on? Do you think you're going to go into labor? I'm like, don't worry. I'm only 38 weeks. I spoke to the doctor. She said that I'm going to experience some false labor. Don't, wor don't worry. Um, he loads up and hits the road to go to Virginia. I loaded up the car and I drove to my doctor's appointment. So I get to the doctor's appointment. She checks me and she's like, whoa. She's like, that bag is about to bust open. She's like, I'm surprised your water has not broken yet. She's like, you're close, but you're not there yet. She's like, you're only 38 weeks, but I can see it. So I'm like, thank you. She's like, if she's like, um, if you are in pain, just take, you know, something like a light Motrin or whatever. But she's like, you know, just stick it out. You should be fine. But she said, you should be having a baby soon. You're starting to, your body is preparing for labor. So, so I get up. Um, the nurse comes in and she's like, oh, how's it going? How you feeling? We're sitting there, we're talking. And I'm like, excuse me, I'm sorry to interrupt our, con my, our conversation, but I have to go to the restroom. So I get up because I thought I had to use the bathroom and poosh, a gush of water comes out. And my water broke at my doctor's appointment, my 38 week appointment, my water broke. So I'm like, so she's like, don't move, don't move. I'm like, I don't have any, any panties. <laughs> she's like, don't worry, I'll get you some panties, I'll get you a pad. She's like, don't move, I need to test the fluid to make sure that it's your, act, that it is your water that broke. She tested it, she said, girl, your water broke. So the midwife comes back in and she's like, so, congratulations, your water broke. She's like, um, there's, a, there's two things. She said, um, because you're not experiencing any pain right now, that means that your contractions haven't started. And she said, do, you can drive home. She's like, well, how far do you live? I'm like, well, this is how far I live. She's like, you can drive home, go get your stuff, call your husband, do what you got to do. And then you could just take your time and head back to um, labor and delivery. And I said, oh, I already have my stuff in the car. She said, perfect. Labor and delivery is right on our campus. All you have to do, she gave me directions. So, um, backtrack to me with the black maternal negative health experiences in the back of my mind. When I was researching where I wanted to have Soraya, I did extensive research on doctors, on hospitals that promoted the natural birth experience. And a lot, um, and I wanted to, to have her in a place that I felt was going to support me in my decision with wanting to do it the natural way and, you know, not really pushy. I was looking for great reviews. This hospital had amazing reviews. And I'm telling you, from the time that my water broke at my doctor's appointment until the time that I left that hospital, the experience was amazing. But wait, there's more to the story. So I called my husband. I said, my water broke. He's like, I'm on my way to Virginia, but I'm still in North Carolina. 
and I'm not too far so I will turn back around with the truck and the trailer a low 18 wheeler truck by the way okay so he turns back around I said okay I'm, I'm headed into labor and delivery remember this is the middle of the pandemic so he was not allowed to come to my doctor's appointment anyway so I was at the doctor's appointment alone um with a mask on I had to check into labor and delivery by myself um yes so I drive over to labor and delivery I take this photo that I'm gonna insert this photo of the they had reserved parking for moms in labor um right I called my friends I called my family I called my best friend I was on FaceTime with my best friend at that moment when I pulled into the parking spot as soon as I turned the engine off on the car, I felt a sharp pain. My first contraction after my water broke started. I was like, oh, this is happening. So I get out the car. I'm trying to get my bag. There's a lady walking into the hospital and she see that I was kind of in pain. She's like, don't move. Let me get you a wheelchair. I'm like, it's okay. I can walk. I'm just trying to be strong. So I walk into labor and delivery. They, you know, check my vitals. They, um give me a COVID test and she said we cannot move you into a room until your COVID test comes back negative um I had my mom on FaceTime she's like call your husband and where is he I said mom I called him already he's on his way at that moment when I was in labor and delivery I started to train my mind to be calm because it was at that moment that I said to myself my doctor is not here to deliver Soraya. My husband is not here with me. I am alone because no one else is allowed to come into this hospital. Because it was COVID, you were only allowed one person. And once that one person is on your list, you cannot change it. So I already had his name down as my one person, one support person. So I said, you know what? If he does not make it here, my aunt cannot come in here. My cousin cannot come here because they're the only family that I have here in North Carolina. So I said, just, you know, stay calm and just be relaxed. So I'm experiencing intense contractions while I'm still in the labor and delivery triage. And the nurse turns to me and she's like, wow, like you're, um... And this is a white nurse. Now we're going to start talking about race. Because this is where black maternal health comes in. She's like, wow, like your contractions are really close apart. And your water literally just broke. My, my appointment was at 2 o'clock p.m. And I checked into labor and delivery. Let's see what time I took the photo. 3.25. So my water probably broke a little after 2. You would say 2.30. I don't know what, what time it was. My COVID test came back negative. At this point, um, I'm just ready to be checked into the room where I'm going to deliver. So, um, and my husband is still not there. I'm still alone, by the way. So they put me in the wheelchair. They said, okay, your test came back negative. Yay! So she pulls me into the room. I got my bag. I got my stuff. She's pushing me. I'm feeling good. I'm, the contractions is, the pain is the exact pain that I was just having during the weekend where they said it was forced labor. So I'm like, okay, this feels familiar. It's not too bad. Whatever. It's just coming closer together. So um, I'm thinking about my birthing plan, which I didn't really have written down, but I had it like in my mind. My birthing plan was to make sure that I was as comfortable as possible and I had wanted to play music on my phone so that I can just be in my zone. So now they push me into the room. And as soon as I go into the room, in the room I am greeted by my labor and delivery nurse and she is a young black woman that greeted me with a smile that I saw in her eyes because I could not see her face through her mask big smile and I'm like look at God and this is just a disclaimer for those people that say you know why does everything always have to be about race? And, you know, my husband mentioned that to me when he finally got there. And I just kept talking about, you know, this whole black thing, black, white, blah, blah. He's like, why does it have to be about race? And the reason why is what I, the reason why is because, like I mentioned in the beginning of this video, a lot of black women show up to hospitals and don't feel like they're represented in the labor and the delivery um, unit. 
they don't feel like their concerns are being heard and they don't feel like they are taken serious unless they are being cared for by someone that looks like them and you know it's just a sense of comfort that you have when you see a professional that is basically responsible for making sure that your baby is about to come into this world safely it's just a sense of security that you have when you see someone that you can relate to you don't feel intimidated you don't feel embarrassed you don't feel like the person is judging you just because they look like there's someone that can be in your family so immediately she greeted me when she was excited she saw that i was alone um and she just you know started to ask me questions about how I, how i was feeling um, she asked, she says, you know what, um, she hooked me up to the machine so that she can monitor, monitor my contractions. I told her that I did not plan to get an epidural, but I was not totally against it. I said, I want to see how, you know, much my body can take. She said, you let me know if you need it, but I support the decision that whatever decision that you make. And I said, you know, um, do I have, um, the flexibility to get up and to move around. She said, wherever you want to go in this room, she said, I'm going to have this machine and I will walk with you. I just felt so comfortable. I put my music on. Um, she's like, you know, it's just support person on the way. I said, he's on his way. She said, okay, let's just, she's like, you can do this. That was like the first thing she said to me. So um, I just felt so comfortable. And she was so young. I'm still doing the math on this whole medical field thing. Like, well, geez, how old is this lady? So, um, I started to labor. Well, continued to labor. Um, she was, she was monitoring my contractions and she said, you know, I am going to be the person that's in the room with you. Um, she said the doctor or the midwife, whoever is on call will come in here to check on you, but I will let that person know when it's time, when you're ready to start pushing. She said, but it's going to be us two majority of the time. So... We be doing our thing. I'm contracting. I'm on the floor. I'm on all fours. I'm on the ball. I'm on the bed, on top of the headboard, butt up. Like every position that you can think of, I was contracting in those positions. Um, next thing you know, I see this young black lady with her hair up in a high afro puff pony with a net on top of it walk into the room she looked younger than a nurse i was like she's like hi my name is i'm not gonna say what her, what's her name you know to respect privacy and um she said i am the midwife that's on call and i am here to tell you that i am gonna be the one delivering your baby so i walked into a hospital with my water broke at 38 weeks by myself because my husband had it was on the road on his way to Virginia, to two black females, one midwife and one nurse that was ready to greet me and help me during this birthing experience. So, you know, when I was doing my research, I said, you know, man, I should have got a doula. Like, I was feeling really, you know, um, uneasy about not having a doula. But with the pandemic, they said the doula can't be in the room. It was just so much. So, I honestly felt like these, these women were my guardian angels. I told her my doctor name. She said, I know her. That's my homegirl. She said, I called her. I told her that you were here and I'm going to take care of you. So, at that point, she said, I'm going to check you. And I think I was at... When she first checked me, I was at six centimeters. She said, you asked six centimeters. How do you feel? I said, I'm doing good. Um, my husband was there at that point. Um, she said, what I'll do is I'm going to come back and check you. She gave me a time. I think the time was like, I don't know, seven or something. I don't remember the time she said she was going to come back in the room. All I know was once she left the room, my contraction started to speed up. It was like lightning. Um, I was just like, whoa, um, this is only four centimeters, whatever, blah, blah, blah. So the, the pain started to become so unbearable that I turned to the nurse and I said, please, could you call the midwife in here? Because I don't think I can wait until the time that um, she needs she needs to check me because I feel like I'm ready to push. Um, 
I felt an extreme amount of pressure. So she comes back into the room and she's like, um, wow. She's like, you're six centimeters. Like I was moving fast. She said, we don't even have to give you anything to help your contraction speed up because your body is literally naturally doing it. Every time she came back in the room, she's like, oh my God, you are doing great. The nurse kept telling me I was doing great. Um, I just felt so supported. Like I felt like I had two cheerleaders in that room with me to encourage me that I, that gave me the confidence to know that I can do this naturally. So when she checked me, she was like, wow, you're at six centimeters. I'm like, oh, wow, that was fast. And I said, wow. So I said, so I need to get to 10 to start pushing. She's like, yeah, I said, I could do four more. So now I'm on the bed, on the floor, doing this from the window to the wall. I'm just everywhere in that room contracting. Um, so this is TMI. I was using the bathroom a lot, number two. Um, I kept saying, I feel pressure. I feel like I got to use the bathroom. It was just coming out. When I tell you that nurse and my husband was wiping my behind like I was a baby, cleaning me up, helping me walk from the bathroom back to the bed. Like that was the luxury that I had with not getting an epidural. I was able to move around in that room. I was able to use the bathroom. Um, They was wiping me. Like it was just the most crazy experience that I've ever had but I felt so supported by the nurse so now um the pain is is getting so intense um I tell the nurse again you know I feel extreme pressure I feel weight down there I really do think it's time for me to start pushing she was like okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna practice some pushes and you and I can do it together and let's do different positions so that we can plan to see what position is the best position for you. So I did an extreme amount of pushing with the nurse down there checking, doing different positions. She's coaching me like, girl, she's like, you got this. You are doing good. You know, she's like, trust your body. She's like, stop and start whenever you want. Just if you feel like you need, you feel pressure, push. I'm going to count and I'll tell you when to stop. She literally was coaching me through it. Like, she was on this side. My husband was on this side. Like, I felt like that was my mom in the room. My mom was on FaceTime. And she just continued to encourage me to... She's like, you got this. You could do this. You're doing a great job. Like, I heard so many affirmations in that room that day. It was just crazy. Um, So, I'm pushing. So, the midwife comes in. She's like, okay, let's check. She's like, wow, you guys got a lot of work done while I was out. She said, okay, let's try one position. She told me to go to my left side and to lift my right leg up and hold my leg. My husband held my leg. And she's like, let's try that and push. I did one good push. Um, he looked at me and he said, Ray, I see black hair. Do it again. We pushed, pushed, and out came my baby girl, Soraya. So it was the moment after Soraya was born that I said, oh my, this hospital, these doctors, this nurse, what an amazing experience. So as you know, because of the pandemic, nobody could be at the hospital. So everybody was on the phone. It was calling Mustafa's phone back to back, calling my phone. He had both our phones. He had people on FaceTime, people on my text, people on the phone. So after... um. Soraya came out they immediately put her on my chest um they put a weighted heated blanket on top of both of us because my body was in so much shock that it was shaking like I felt like I was shivering from being cold she was like you're not cold it's just your body is in shock and this is what happens like she kept explaining to me everything that was happening during the entire process so um i'm laying there with my baby on my chest we're both under this warm heated blanket and um i'm realizing i'm like wow she's still on me like they did not move her they were suctioning her nose i'll see if i can insert a video without revealing too much suctioning her nose cleaning her up while she's on my chest everyone kept on calling how much she weigh Ooh. oh she came out at 1102 and i checked into labor and delivery like you said a little bit before four um so everyone's calling how much does she weigh send us a picture do this do that do that they did not take my baby off of me until way after like like an hour and some change so um he's trying to put the phone in, in my face and she turns to him and says 
could you please with a stern mommy auntie voice could you please give her a second because i had the baby on my chest and she was down there stitching me up so um i looked at him and i kind of like chuckled like oh like she ain't playing like i just felt so supported in that room um so they stitched me up um she was like i'm just gonna we're just gonna leave you and have you let you have time with your baby um and she's like, you let us know what you need. They never asked me if I needed milk or anything for Soraya or if I needed this, if I needed that. They didn't do anything to her. Like, they literally allowed her to just lay on my chest completely dirty. They, like, wiped her up a little and just um, suctioned her nose and her mouth. But it was, it was just me and my baby flesh to flesh for over an hour. So as we're laying in the bed, my body is still shaking, but it started to calm down. Um, I realized, I see Soraya wakes up because she was like sleeping. She's like, and she's like moving and making this sound and she's looking for my breast. I'm like, what? Like I mentioned, I was trying to do this whole natural thing. And I said, you know what? I'm going to try just like with the epidural. I said, I'm going to try, but if I can't, it's no big deal breastfeeding i'm gonna try but if i can't it's no big deal my baby girl because she was on and i feel like it's only because of that because she was on my chest for like almost two hours i think it was like an hour and a half they did not move her to put her on that cold scale they did not wash her she didn't even take a bath until the day that we was leaving was her first bath which was just a wipe down by the way um yeah, because of that time that she had on my chest, she naturally just started to search for my breast to start breastfeeding. So she was able to latch on. She did her first feeding. And so the nurse turned to me and she said, okay, so I see that you're doing the breastfeeding thing. She told me what to do. She said, this is the time where you, I want you to write down every time she latches on so that you can offer it to her. I think she said every two hours or she said every hour. I forgot how long it was. Um, so yeah, so I started my breastfeeding journey in the hospital right after I delivered. So now, you know, Sarai was, she was born at 1102 and you know, they were getting close to shift change. So, um, they, you know, she cleaned me up. I, I got up. I was like, I got to use the bathroom. I use the bathroom. Um, I'll use the bathroom right after I push Soraya out. And I promise you, I'm not lying. God can strike me down. I know I shouldn't say that, but this is like, I'm so serious. I used the bathroom. I laid down. I cleaned myself up. I felt like a sense of relief. Like I honestly felt like I just took a big poop. I felt like a weight. I felt so good. Like, I cannot believe I just delivered a baby. Like, my body felt so strong. I was just, like, energized. I'm like, what? I just pushed a baby out with no pain medicine, no epidural. This is crazy. Like, I felt so good. So, um, they cleaned me up. We packed my stuff up. They rolled me and Soraya into the, the um, is it called, the, I think, the recovery room where we were going to stay until it was time for us to leave. And then it was at that point that I said my goodbye to the nurse and the midwife. She was like, you know, I'm leaving. The shift is changing. And she's like, you did an amazing job. She said, I'm going to call your doctor and I'm going to tell her how good you did. And I'm so proud of you. And she was like, congratulations. Um, me and Soraya went to sleep. And the nurse said, she cannot sleep on you. As you know, I was breastfeeding. They had her in the bassinet right next to me. She stayed in, She did not leave my sight the entire time that I was in the hospital. They did not take her away from me until it was time for them to start doing her vitals or whatever you call it. She was right next to me. I had my hand on the bassinet. I'll insert some videos and I lay down on that bed and we was knocked out. The nurse came in and she said, oh my, like you guys have been asleep for hours. She said, I kept coming in here to check on you. And I said, you know what? I'm just going to let them sleep. Like she allowed me to sleep. A lot of birth stories that I hear on YouTube, you see people always say, them nurses kept coming in and waking me up, doing this, doing this, pushing all my stuff. And I'm telling you, this hospital, is okay, I'm just going to share. It was no fun. Nova Health Presbyterian Hospital. Um, they, they deserve to get a shout out. Nova Presbyterian Hospital in Uptown Charlotte. They allowed me to sleep with my baby. They did not come in and bother us so many times. Um, 
right after I delivered, I think the dinner time was, it was like over or the kitchen was going to close. Um, the nurse, she put my dinner order in before the kitchen closed. So she made sure that after I delivered that I had something to eat. Um, the next morning when I woke up, the, the doctor who delivered Soraya came to the room to check on me. She, um, it was just like such an amazing experience. Um, we did all of the paperwork for her birth certificate. The admin person came to the office. She gave me everything that I needed to get it mailed to my home. Um, we filled out all of the paperwork. They gave, they gave me a bunch of stuff. They asked me if I needed anything. Um, the meals were amazing. They continued to um, give me extra food, anything that I needed. The lactation, the lactation um, specialist came to the room multiple times to help me um, with birthing positions. I had my boppy pillow with me in the hospital. Um, it was just such a great experience. Like I felt supported. I felt like I was heard in the hospital experience was just so amazing like from the time that I checked into triage to the time that I left that hospital it was such an amazing experience like I actually could not believe it and and the reason why I'm sharing this experience on black maternal health week because um the the Biden Harris administration is doing what they can to pass um you know legal um legislation to to put into law that you know the inequity is not fair you know the the systemic racism and injustices all of all of the things that are going on in hospitals to black women is not fair um and the government is trying to do their part to shed light to this that's why this week black maternal health week was created and they're just trying to make things legally um put put legal take legal action to hold hospitals and doctors accountable for the injustice that black women have experienced throughout the years um because it's just not fair like the color of your skin should not matter and obviously it doesn't even matter if you have money because um i think beyonce and serena williams had i don't know about beyonce but i think serena williams had negative birthing experiences that almost cost her her life and she feels like it was because of the color of her skin and because everybody thinks she's this super strong monster just because of her athletic ability but that's another story but yeah, so because of that, I really truly wanted to explain to share. I truly wanted to share my positive birth experience to encourage you. If you're watching this video and you are pregnant right now and you are black and you are this is your first time having a baby, trust me, you can do it. Do your research. Try to go to a hospital that supports what you want. Um if you are, you know, if you feel more comfortable with a black doctor, do research and try to go to a place where there's black doctors. Um, do your research on the hospital. Join mom groups on Facebook, um, pregnancy groups, so that you can just get as much information as possible so that when you go into the hospital that you can, you and your support person can properly advocate for yourself. Um, I'm just so happy that, you know, the, the nurse that I had and the, the midwife was excuse me the nurse that I had and the midwife was just so supportive and I felt like they really had my back and I went in to it already with my mind trained that I can do this but with seeing them and hearing them I just felt even more supported and I just felt like a superwoman that day like it's so crazy um I'm gonna insert the photo of my amazing birthing team here so that you guys could see it because I just was super duper proud and I made sure that I took the photo because I want and I have the photo inside Sarai's baby book because I want her to see um the beautiful black strong woman that helped bring her into this world um it, it's a photo that's going to go down to history and it was such amazing experience and I know that those women um delivered so many babies but I just want the world to know that Yes, there are black women that are having negative birth and experience, but trust me, there are a lot of us that have positive ones. So thank you all so much for listening to my story. I know it was long, 
but it's very important to share you know um mom you could do this mom you could do it mama mom to be whatever you call yourself you can do it train your mind don't let the negative you know news articles and all of the negative videos of bad birth experiences on youtube discourage you you can do it um i also wanted to add that i'm sharing my story and i'm not trying to undermine or downplay the negative experiences black women have had um in labor and delivery or in the hospital i just want to you know balance the scale to show that there are a lot of women that had positive experience and that felt supported during their birthing experience but i truly believe that representation matters and if i was not represented at that hospital that day maybe i would have never had that experience so you know thank you to all of the black um nursing professionals that are out there um i'm going to you know continue to share this story so that i can encourage a young um, woman a young lady who may be interested in going into the nursing field may be interested in becoming a doctor because we matter and representation matter because it is we will be the ones that protect us so thank you again for watching i truly enjoy filming this video and sharing my story with you i really wish i had a lot of video but i honestly wasn't thinking about recording like i should have packed my camera but i just wasn't thinking um it was such an amazing experience so thank you guys for watching and please subscribe to my channel share this video with uh um someone that's pregnant and just feeling nervous with having a baby during a pandemic um because we have to spread the word so thank you and i will be back with another video Bye bye